Hey everyone! Before we get started, I just wanted to give you a quick spoiler warning for the video I posted a couple weeks ago where I attempted to catch every fish in Stardew Valley in just one in-game day. If you haven't seen it yet, I definitely recommend watching it before this one in order to get the right context for what you're about to see, because it'll be a little bit confusing otherwise. There will be a link in the top right corner to watch that video now, or you can check the description for a link if that works better. Once you've watched it, or if you just don't mind being spoiled, feel free to come back and keep watching from here. Thank you and enjoy the video. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening everyone. I've had a few comments on the Master Angler video asking for the full uncut version of the final attempt in the challenge, attempt 583. And I wanted to release it anyway, just for posterity's sake to have it out there, so uh, this is what that's going to be. I'm mostly just going to let the run play out as is. I might interject with some commentary here and there if I do have things to talk about, because believe it or not, even in the hour and a half long video I made about the challenge, there is still plenty more to talk about that I never discussed or brought up during the, the actual overview. So if I come up with anything on the spot here, I will uh, I'll interject. But for the most part, yeah, this is just going to be pure, unadulterated fishing for the next, like, 43 minutes, according to <laughs> according to the playtime on my, on my end here. So, um, yeah, please enjoy. Let's get started. One thing you will notice right away here is that the uh, playtime is 59 hours and 53 minutes. That doesn't include all the resets that I did for this. Um, every time I reset and played through the day, I didn't count that time as playtime in this farm. So the this is closer to probably like 150 to 160 hours of playtime on this farm. This would be about 85, 84 to 85 hours into the actual fishing grind itself. Got really lucky to hook the Legend very first cast here. Um, as sort of a general rule, a rule of thumb for myself, if I didn't hook the Legend by 7 a.m. on an attempt, I would just reset the day. That's just how I how this went. But got pretty lucky on this attempt here. I actually had quite a few little personal deadlines for myself that I just set through the challenge to know whether I was keeping a good pace with my best attempts or not. Um, generally, I want to be out of here, out of the lake, by 8 a.m. at the very, very latest. And so if I didn't hit that threshold, I would typically reset as well. Some of the thresholds I set for myself later on in the challenge, uh, like deep into an attempt, I wouldn't always reset for. I would just try and hit them and keep going even if I didn't, unless I was like way off the mark. Because sometimes you're just so deep into a run that it's not worth resetting. It's, at it's worth at least, you know, playing it out to see if you get lucky. Starting to see as well here that I'm canceling out a lot of these casts because they're not the specific pattern I'm looking for. You'll see that a lot throughout the entire uh, entire rest of this attempt. I know this one, this is the bullhead. It's got a very distinct pattern that it's burned into my brain now. Fun fact, this, uh, this part of the run going from the lake straight to the pond here was pretty was a pretty late addition to my strategy. And it was so late that I had forgotten for a little while that there was that shortcut between the beach and the cinder sap forest. So I would warp to the beach and take the long way around, wasting like a lot more time. I did that for like a good 
like probably like 10, 20, 30 attempts, something like that, before I realized my mistake. This section of the run here, I um, I glossed over it pretty heavily because I kind of had to in the in the final video because there are just so many fish that I catch here. I couldn't really linger on it for too long, given that I had to keep the I had to keep the attempt going in time with the music. Otherwise, it wouldn't have worked out the way that I wanted it to in the final edited version. But uh, I was here for a decent amount of time, and you'll see that you'll see like you know repeat catches or me canceling out of other of casts that I know aren't the fish that I need. I don't know the pattern of every fish in the in the pond here, of all the freshwater fish, especially not this late on. Like this, I recorded this like over a year ago at this point, so a lot of these patterns are lost to me now. I probably had a better idea while I was doing it. But I do have ideas of like some of the more difficult or seemingly rarer fish that were always a little bit harder to find. Things like the Dorado, the rainbow trout, things that were just, you know, rarer for whatever reason or another due to the way Stardew's fishing mechanics work sometimes. Here's the Dorado. The Dorado, even though it shouldn't be that much rarer than any other fish in theory, it was always one of those ones that I found really hard to catch. Maybe there is extra rarity associated with it, just by how magic bait works. I'm not entirely sure on the numbers, but um, it's definitely it was definitely a harder one to find a lot of the time. It was rare enough that I never really got a pat. I never really got its pattern down in my brain. I sort of lumped it in with like even though I didn't necessarily have every fish's exact pattern in my memory all the time, I did group them into you know distinct difficulties of patterns. So like the Dorado, the catfish, and the lingcod are all reasonably difficult fish. So if there was a reasonably difficult one that I was missing and I happened to get one of those, then I would I would see it through and and hope that it would be the one I was missing. And there's also easy fish like the like the sunfish, the smallmouth bass, the bream, and they're all kind of looped in the in the same category. Those ones I had down a bit more exactly as far as their patterns go. Like sometimes the sunfish, I feel like the sunfish's pattern was always a bit easier than the smallmouth bass, but not by much. But if you fish enough times, you're going to notice the difference. This is a part this is something that's going to happen a few times throughout this attempt is I'm going to tab out and you'll see the whole game just kind of freeze up for a little bit. That's me going over to my notes to check off all the fish that I've caught so far so I don't have to keep track of it mentally and I know how many fish that I still have to catch in the area if any. So I'll be leaving these sections in even though there's not really anything happening on the screen just for posterity's sake to say it's uncut but I'll also put a timestamp on screen so that you can skip to the actual fishing segments if you want to there's there's nothing that's going to happen in these it's just me literally checking off my notes so uh feel free to skip ahead if you want to Thank you. 
then obviously I had to delete all the fish. There was part of me that wanted to try and like set up chests along the route so that I could save all the fish and then at the end of the challenge just like have every every fish, fish from the collection in one of those chests, but I never got around to doing that. I would just delete them as I went. This was a really lucky stretch in the pond, by the way. Getting every fish that I could there by 9.30 is almost unheard of in this, uh, in this challenge. I was really, really lucky to get that. Usually it takes at least until like 10.30, if not 11, from my memory. The fish in the secret woods here, I mean, it's really easy. There's only the two fish. There's the carp and the wood skip, as long as it's not raining. If it is raining, you can also get the catfish, but it makes it really easy to tell their patterns apart because the wood skip, it's not a hard fish, but it's a lot harder than the, than the carp, I'll tell you that. There's a few areas in the game like that that make it uh, pretty obvious which fish you're actually catching. There's the secret ponds here. There's the mutant bug layer later, later. And, and the sewer is just on its own. Those are all areas that just have like a couple fish, so it's really easy to nail down their patterns. I got to the beach really early on here, um, even before the bubbles started down here, because that's another key part of the strategy was the bubbles at the night market. That tilapia catch is also really lucky, because normally I'd have to rely on magic bait on Ginger Island for that one. I think I also get... This might actually be the octopus right here, judging by that pattern. I do catch it here as well, which was another sort of key point to this being the uh, the final run, I think. Is that I didn't have to rely on luck to catch it on Ginger Island. Yeah, the tilapia and the octopus back-to-back -back there is actually <laughs> kind of insane, thinking back on it. That's the old mariner achievement. I believe that is 10 different species of fish caught. No, it's got to be more than 10. It's like 24 dif or different ones, I think, something like that. But yeah, despite how early I got to this uh, part of the run here, I do distinctly remember being very close to resetting the the run at this point. Not necessarily at this exact point, like this is still a really good pace, obviously. But towards the end of this, um, I was, it was getting to the point where I was like teetering on the edge of resetting just because of how long certain fish were taking. I have to get, I believe it's the sardine, the red mullet, and the sea cucumber if I remember right, are the ones that I have to get with uh, with wild bait. And then try and then I was also using magic bait here just to try and get as many fish as I could out of the bubbles. But generally, my personal deadline to try and get out of this area was roughly 3 p.m., which gave me a lot of time to, to work here. And usually I was out like a lot earlier than that if I got those three fish in time. And you'll see we actually do get pretty close to that deadline in this attempt even. So it's uh, despite the early luck with the lake fish and the pond fish, it does even out a bit more here and it's and it gets pretty close. I believe my general strategy at these bubbles was to fish for with magic bait um, until I got the three fish that I have to use magic bait on, which are, which would be the eel, the red snapper, and there's a third one I can't remember off the top of my head, but they're three fish that wouldn't be available anywhere else. There's the eel. Um, whereas like every other fish that I am catching with magic bait right now, like the octopus, the tilapia. 
the, the squid and all that stuff. They're available elsewhere at different times. Sometimes with magic bait, sometimes without. So I wouldn't worry about them as much. Um, so I would fish here either until I got all three of those. Or until I got the three fish that I mentioned earlier. The sardine, the sea cucumber, and the red mullet. Typically also the herring as well. Although I didn't really need that one because it's, it's an all day fish. So I could always catch it when I came back at night to do the, the crimson fish fishing and all that. So yeah, I would keep going either until I got those three exclusive magic bait fish or until I got the three fish that I have to catch with wild bait here, whichever came first, really. And in this case, I got exceptionally lucky to get a lot of the, uh, the magic bait fish while going for those. It did eat up a lot of time, but a lot of that time was well spent in getting the, like, a lot of different uh, fish that I would have to catch later anyway, probably using magic bait or otherwise when I came back during the, uh, during the night. That's the second of... Actually, I might have already caught a red snapper a bit earlier. I think the three magic bait fish that aren't available at any other point, so I have to catch them at some point with magic bait, I have no other choice, are the red snapper, the eel, and the anchovy. That's the, that's the third one I wasn't remembering, because the anchovy... You would think that it's a, it's a relatively common fish, and it is in the seasons that it's available, it's just not available in winter anywhere. It's rare that I would have to actually stay fishing in one location long enough that I'd need to eat a second seafoam pudding. It does happen, especially at these spots with the bubbles where I'm fishing for considerably longer, but it's a, it's a pretty rare occurrence for sure. And that's the anchovy. That's the last uh, fish that specifically requires magic bait here. So my strategy now would be to switch to wild bait to catch the uh, one fish I haven't caught yet here that is available with wild bait, which is the sea cucumber, which I think I catch pretty quickly once I switch to wild bait. Lo and behold. <laughs> And again, I'm tabbing out here just to mark off my checklist of all the fish that I've caught so far and, uh, and stay up to date on that. You'll see I also didn't delete that wall basket there. 
Um, there are a few of those decorations that you can fish up during this challenge. The wall baskets, the... It's not a decoration, but the pearl from the night market. The gourmand statue in the Pirate's Cove. If I ever got those, I would tend to just keep them as little trophies for that run. It was just sort of a little good luck charm thing that I <laughs> that I hung on to a little bit. I thought it was fun. You gotta do something to break up the monotony when you're doing a, a big grind like this. I flip-flopped a lot in the Pirate Cove here as to whether I should fish right away here at this spot where, uh, where like, this first little bit of water is, or if I should go all the way down to, like, the main part of the Pirate Cove and fish there. You get a lot more trash when you're fishing here, case in point, um, versus if you're fishing in the actual main body of water, with the obvious upshoot being that you have to travel far less distance in order to reach this fishing spot. So if you do get lucky and catch the fish that you need which I think the only one I need right now is the Stingray, since I got lucky enough at the uh, at the bubbles with the magic bait. And there it is. That uh, if you get lucky enough, you can save a lot of time just in travel time there. But I, depending on, you know, my mood in each run, I would, I would change up my strategy. The only fish I needed here was the angler, because I got pretty much every... I think I got literally every other freshwater fish um, that's available in the river here from the pond earlier, so... So the angler was all it was. And the legendary fish actually have reasonably high bite rates. They can feel pretty low sometimes, especially when you're on a time crunch like this and you really need to get them, but but most of the time they bite within a few, within a few casts. Getting here to the Witch's Swamp was always a bit of a hassle. It's one of those areas that's just so far out of the way. A lot of comments did talk about using, like, chairs, like hopping between chairs, setting up lines of chairs all over the place in order to save travel time. And that is a smart idea, that you, you could definitely use that to optimize this, this run a lot further and, and save extra time. But a lot of the time you do burn in this challenge is just via fishing in one spot over and over again like this. But for long stretches of travel, like from the Mountain Warp Totem statue to the Witch's Swamp, which is, is one of the longer paths that you have to travel on this. Um, that chair strategy, the Booty Express, as, as Blade has coined it, would definitely save a lot of time and, and make things a bit easier for sure. Give you, a, give you time for probably like a few extra casts overall, which is pretty valuable. I also never mentioned that these bubbles here in the desert um, existed. I was aware of them during the challenge. Like, this, 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 this didn't catch me by surprise on this run. I knew that these appeared here. I still don't know the exact time of it, but it was, uh, since it's only for, like, these two fish, for the sandfish and the scorpion carp, it wasn't really that relevant to mention it during the, the final overview, but... But it is here, and it and it does it does help because bubbles. Every any t chance you can take bubbles, you definitely want to take it.
taking another moment here to tab out of the game and check on my fishing collection. This was a good time to uh, to like take a little sort of micro break in the middle of the challenge is when you're descending from the surface to the bottom while you're waiting for you know the submarine to go down. Anytime I could get a, a run to this point, it was always kind of nice just to be able to relish in that moment of not having to fish. It was it was always a bit anxiety inducing, of course, just waiting for that time to pass, watching the clock. But it's still nice to have that sort of break point right in the middle. You do have to time your cast here a little bit well, um, because if the doors to the that open there, that open and show and reel the water beneath, aren't fully open, like even if there's just a little bit of them, and your bobber still like hits a portion that looks like water, um, it's not going to let you fish there. It's not until the doors are fully open and the green light is on, over where like above where the captain is, that you're actually allowed to fish there. So if you if you time your cast just right, then you can uh, you can get there. Like within the first few frames that it opens, which I don't I don't know if I ever really got that good at timing that, but um, I feel like I got better as time went on for sure. Of all the fish in the run, these three are probably, like, the ones at the night market here, the spook fish, the blob fish, and the midnight squid. They're probably the three that are, that their patterns are most, you know, distinct to me. Um, for, like, fish in the same area. Like, pretty much 100% of the time when I, when I hook to a fish here, I could tell whether it was one of those three. The only real discrepancy there is if I hooked a blob fish... Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between a blobfish and a super cucumber, which is also here. And the only other fish you can catch here are, I believe there's a sea, chance for a sea cucumber and a chance for an octopus. Um, which are distinct in their own right, so it's pretty easy to tell which fish you've hooked there. In the final version of this run, in the main video, by the way, you may notice, if you're paying really close attention, that on the tracker, um, in the tracker for the sewers here, I do catch, like, white algae, but it doesn't actually show up on the tracker um, until later in the run. Like, I don't think I show the, that I've caught white algae until, like, the final portion when I'm fishing in the mines. The reason for, for that is completely just because of I wanted to time everything to the to the music, and if I had shown a clip of me catching the white algae, it would have thrown things off just a little bit, just enough for me to, for it to be a little bit more hectic, more hectic than I wanted in the actual final cut. So that's really the only reason that it, that I didn't show it here. I knew that I, it would show a clip of me catching white algae towards the end in the mines anyway when I was doing that whole final segment, so I didn't think it was that important to show it here. The same actually happened with the green algae. Towards the very start of the run, I caught some in the mountain lake when I was fishing for those fish. But uh, the way the timing of the editing worked out, I didn't have a, a clip to show. But again, it's one of those that you see me catch it enough throughout the run. It's, it's just kind of expected and implied that I'm going to catch it at some point. I don't think I had any attempt in all the 583 that I did where I failed to catch a green algae. Unless I just like failed to get the run started at all by missing the legend.
It is definitely a saving grace here that the glacier fish has the highest bite rate out of any, any of the legendary fish at, at about 50%. Because it's so difficult to catch, as, as you can see here. I think I actually might fail this first, uh, this first catch even, I don't fully remember. But it's so difficult that you want as many attempts as you can to get it in quick succession. Yep, see, I didn't even get it on the first try there. I think I probably get it on the second try here. But, uh... But yeah, the glacier fish, man. <laughs> even this deep into the challenge, it's just such a demanding fish. That was definitely a sigh of relief when I when I reeled it in on my second try there. I was having flashbacks to that one attempt where I failed to catch it like four times in a row. And that was, I, I doubt that was the only attempt, you know. The glacier fish is burned into my brain more than ever after doing this challenge. This part of the run was always a little bit hit or miss. Um, I typically didn't have that many oceanic fish to catch if I made it to this point in a run, because a lot of them I would have caught earlier on at the Bubbles at the Night Market. But there were always at least a few that I would need. Typically it was just ones that I could use wild bait for a lot of the time, like the albacorn things. So they didn't take that long a lot of the time. In fact, I think the albacore is probably the only fish I actually need here, if memory serves. But it was still always a bit of a tense moment, and there were a few runs that died even this this late in because uh, the fish just refused to show up. But I think this is probably it here. Actually, no, it's not. Okay. <laughs> I thought the albacore was about that hard, but maybe not. My past self knows better, it seems. I think it was about this moment where I'm pausing for a while here that I was really taking stock of the situation and realizing that, like, I, I had to go to Ginger Island, but all I had to catch were, I think, like, the lionfish and the blue discus, like, literally just the Ginger Island exclusives, because I'd gotten so lucky with the with the magic bait earlier on. Didn't need a super cucumber, didn't need an octopus, a tilapia, nothing, just, just those two fish. And I think that's what really helped seal the deal on this run to really solidify the pace, is not having to worry about those fish here, because that really could have just, just killed the run out right if I had to rely on magic bait. But, yeah, fate smiled upon me, what can I say? There was always the chance to catch gold walnuts on Ginger Island here, by the way. In fact, that's in the final edited video, that's one of the main things that uh, that sort of stops one of the runs, is I caught a golden walnut when I could was looking for a blue discus. But, um, like, there were a few comments saying, like, oh, you should have caught all the gold walnuts before you did your attempts, and obviously that would have been smart, but the thing is that catching those gold walnuts also invalidates the fishing tutorial that I was using to catch the legend for free, basically. So it would have been a trade-off that I don't think would have been worth it. I think using that free free catch on the legend as the first thing was was pivotal to getting runs started to begin with.
there's a little bit of fun trivia for you. I think this is a pretty long pause here. So again, there's a time stamp, time stamp to skip because this was the moment that I realized just how good of a pace this was. And I went to get my microphone. So I'll, I'll probably pass off the commentary to, uh, to my past self in a minute here. Some com some of the commentary you've already heard if you watched the, f the, uh, the full Master Angler video. Um, but there were parts that I cut out as well. So, so you'll hear that. All right, so I just put on my microphone because this is uh, far and away the best pace I've ever been on, um, and I'm really excited, but I'm still, I mean, I've had runs where any fish can ruin it, right? Like, I've had runs where the mines fish just don't want to bite, but all I have left is the ghost fish, stone fish, ice pip, and lava eel. And still two hours to go. Um... This is unprecedented pace. I gave myself a hard limit of 600 attempts. If I hit 600 and I wasn't and I didn't get it, then I wasn't going to keep going. I was just going to make the video and go from there. Um, 583 attempts. That's the attempt I'm on right now. Let's uh, let's see. Let's see if I can pull this off. Please be kind to me. Maximize my chances here. Curiosity lure, okay. Here we go. Early stonefish would be huge right here. Like if this is a stone fit this might be a stonefish. This feels like a stonefish. Okay, that's really, really, really good. Alright, we move on to the ice pip. I've worked so long on this challenge. Please. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Please, just and just a bite. A ghost fish, even. I still need a ghost fish. I, I need either. Okay. That's an ice pip. The rarer of the two fish. Just catch it. Got it. I'm gonna switch bobbers now. Just need to get a ghost fish and we can be out of here at 1 a.m. hopefully. I'm not gonna have enough time to make it to the caldera, I don't think. So I'm gonna have to go for a floor 100 lava eel, which is not great. Not good odds. If I can get a ghost fish at all, please don't do it. Don't do me like that. Not like this. That's a ghost fish. That's a ghost fish. Okay. I can't make it to the caldera. There's just not enough time. Especially, yeah, I just ticked over to 130. Okay, I have to go for 100. Get the coffee. Okay. There's still a chance. I think it's about 10% chance with the curiosity lure to hook a lava eel, and then I just have to catch it. I just have to hook it, catch it. Please. Please. Just give me a chance. Give me one chance. This is the closest I've ever been. Here we go. <gasps> no way. No way, no way. This is actually happening. Just catch it. I just have to catch this. I just have to catch it. Please, please, please. That's it! 
Oh my god, I'm done! I, uh... Oh, the Master Angler achievement, it popped up. <laughs> like, no way! No way! I don't believe- I'm actually physically shaking. I- <laughs> Oh my god. That's like over 300 hours of- <laughs> Oh my god. It actually- Oh. 150. <laughs> Every fish in Stardew Valley caught on the same day. I can't believe I actually pulled that off. Oh my god, I was so close to giving up too. I only had like 17 more tries until the 600th attempt. Holy crap. This doesn't even feel real. The odds on that to get that lava eel at the very end. I only had like maybe like one, maybe two shots at catching and even hooking a lava eel. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I really don't. I want to cry. <laughs> oh my God. I can... I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You may have heard me say that was like over 300 hours. To this day, I don't know where I got that number from um, in the heat of the moment there. Because this was, I mean, it's like I said, it was like 85 hours of, of fishing, plus the 60 hours to, like, set up the farm, plus, like, research time. I still don't think that adds up to over 300 hours, but it was, I mean, it was it was getting close, so so maybe it wasn't too far off. And, of course, eating the lava yell at the end, I thought it was, like, the perfect little capstone for, uh, for those in the know. If you know, you know. And if not, it's still a funny little thing to see me. I, I did catch two lava eels with by virtue of the magic bait. Sorry, the wild bait, since that's the other effect it can have, is letting you catch uh, two fish at the same time. Two copies of the same fish, I should, I should clarify. At any rate, that's the, that's the entire run there. I come and get the star drop here, and that's about it. So, uh, yeah. For anyone who wanted to see the full run, I hope you enjoyed it here. It was it's it's been a nostalgic experience just watching it again myself, reliving the moments and sort of walking through the strategies. It was a fun time. I hope I gave you some extra insight into uh into the actual process of playing through the challenge here. Yeah, if you watched this far, thank you very much. Thank you also for uh for the Amazing reception on the Master Angler video itself so far. I greatly appreciate it. It's been really cool to see everyone's reactions to it. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to, to do more content in the future. Not necessarily fishing related, but other challenges are definitely on the way. So, so keep your eyes peeled for those. And uh, I'll see you all in whatever journey we go on next. Take care, everybody.